April 19. David destroys the Amalekites. Three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziklag, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and Ziklag. They had crushed Ziklag and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought it. Then David asked the Lord, Should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, Yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. So David and his six hundred men set out, and they came to the brook Bezor. But two hundred of the men were too exhausted to cross the brook, so David continued the pursuit with four hundred men. Along the way they found an Egyptian man in a field and brought him to David. They gave him some bread to eat and water to drink. They also gave him part of a fig cake and two clusters of raisins, for he hadn't had anything to eat or drink for three days and nights. Before long his strength returned. To whom do you belong and where do you come from? David asked him. I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite, he replied. My master abandoned me three days ago because I was sick. We were on our way back from raiding the Carathites and the Negev, the territory of Judah, and the land of Caleb, and we had just burned Ziklag. Will you lead me to this band of raiders? David asked. The young man replied, If you take an oath in God's name that you will not kill me or give me back to my master, then I will guide you to them. So he led David to them, and they found the Amalekites spread out across the fields, eating and drinking and dancing with joy because of the vast amount of plunder they had taken from the Philistines and the land of Judah. David and his men rushed in among them and slaughtered them throughout that night and the entire next day until evening. None of the Amalekites escaped except 400 young men who fled on camels. David got back everything the Amalekites had taken, and he rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, small or great, son or daughter, nor anything else that had been taken. David brought everything back. He also recovered all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock. This plunder belongs to David, they said. Then David returned to the brook Bezor and met up with the two hundred men who had been left behind because they were too exhausted to go with him. They went out to meet David and his men, and David greeted them joyfully. But some evil troublemakers among David's men said, They didn't go with us, so they can't have any of the plunder we recovered. Give them their wives and children and tell them to be gone. But David said, No, my brothers. Don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. He has kept us safe and helped us defeat the band of raiders that attacked us. Who will listen when you talk like this? We share and share alike, those who go to battle and those who guard the equipment. From then on, David made this a decree and regulation for Israel, and it is still followed today. When he arrived at Ziklag, David sent part of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends. Here is a present for you taken from the Lord's enemies, he said. The gifts were sent to the people of the following towns David had visited, Bethel, Ramoth-Negev, Jeter, Aror, Sifmoth, Eshtemoa, Rachel, the towns of the Jeremielites, the towns of the Kenites, Hormah, Boration, Athak, Hebron, and all the other places David and his men had visited. Here is a list of the men from Manasseh who defected to David as he was returning to Ziklag. Adna, Jazabad, Jediel, Michael, Jazabad, Ilahu, and Zithali. Each commanded 1,000 troops from the tribe of Manasseh. They helped David chase down bands of raiders, for they were all brave and able warriors who became commanders in his army. Day after day, more men joined David until he had a great army, like the army of God. The Death of Saul Now the Philistines attacked Israel, and the men of Israel fled before them. Many were slaughtered on the slopes of Mount Gilboa. The Philistines closed in on Saul and his sons, and they killed three of his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua. The fighting grew very fierce around Saul, and the Philistine archers caught up with him and wounded him severely. Saul groaned to his armor-bearer, Take your sword and kill me before these pagan Philistines come to run me through and taunt and torture me. 
but his armor-bearer was afraid and would not do it, so Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer realized that Saul was dead, he fell on his own sword and died beside the king. So Saul, his three sons, his armor-bearer, and his troops all died together that same day. When the Israelites on the other side of the Jezreel Valley and beyond the Jordan saw that the Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their towns and fled. So the Philistines moved in and occupied their towns. The next day, when the Philistines went out to strip the dead, they found the bodies of Saul and his three sons on Mount Gilboa. So they cut off Saul's head and stripped off his armor. Then they proclaimed the good news of Saul's death in their pagan temple and to the people throughout the land of Philistia. They placed his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreths, and they fastened his body to the wall of the city of Bethshan. But when the people of Jabesh-Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their mighty warriors traveled through the night to Bethshan and took the bodies of Saul and his sons down from the wall. They brought them to Jabesh, where they burned the bodies. Then they took their bones and buried them beneath the tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they fasted for seven days. Now the Philistines attacked Israel, and the men of Israel fled before them. Many were slaughtered on the slopes of Mount Gilboa. The Philistines closed in on Saul and his sons, and they killed three of his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua. The fighting grew very fierce around Saul, and the Philistine archers caught up with him and wounded him. Saul groaned to his armor-bearer, Take your sword and kill me before these pagan Philistines come to taunt and torture me. But his armor-bearer was afraid and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer realized that Saul was dead, he fell on his own sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died there together, bringing his dynasty to an end. When all the Israelites in the Jezreel Valley saw that their army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their towns and fled. So the Philistines moved in and occupied their towns. The next day, when the Philistines went out to strip the dead, they found the bodies of Saul and his sons on Mount Gilboa. So they stripped off Saul's armor and cut off his head. Then they proclaimed the good news of Saul's death before their idols and to the people throughout the land of Philistia. They placed his armor in the temple of their gods, and they fastened his head to the temple of Dagon. But when everyone in Jabesh-Gilead heard about everything the Philistines had done to Saul, all their mighty warriors brought the bodies of Saul and his sons back to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones beneath the great tree at Jabesh, and they fasted for seven days. So Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He failed to obey the Lord's command, and he even consulted a medium instead of asking the Lord for guidance. So the Lord killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Jonathan's Descendants Jonathan was the father of Mirab Baal. Mirab Baal was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binei. Binei's son was Rephaia. Rephaia's son was Eliasa. Eliasa's son was Azel. Azel had six sons, whose names were Ezrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Saul's son Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth, who was crippled as a child. He was five years old when the report came from Jezreel that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up and fled. But as she hurried away, she dropped him, and he became crippled. David Learns of Saul's Death After the death of Saul, David returned from his victory over the Amalekites and spent two days in Ziklag. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's army camp. He had torn his clothes and put dirt on his head to show that he was in mourning. He fell to the ground before David in deep respect. Where have you come from? David asked. I escaped from the Israelite camp, the man replied. What happened? David demanded. Tell me how the battle went. The man replied, Our entire army fled from the battle. Many of the men are dead, and Saul and his son Jonathan are also dead. How do you know Saul and Jonathan are dead? David demanded of the young man. The man answered, I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning on his spear with the enemy chariots and charioteers closing in on him. 
When he turned and saw me, he cried out for me to come to him. How can I help? I asked him. He responded, Who are you? I am an Amalekite, I told him. Then he begged me, Come over here and put me out of my misery, for I am in terrible pain and want to die. So I killed him, the Amalekite told David, for I knew he couldn't live. Then I took his crown and his armband, and I have brought them here to you, my lord. David and his men tore their clothes in sorrow when they heard the news. They mourned and wept and fasted all day for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the Lord's army and the nation of Israel, because they had died by the sword that day. Then David said to the young man who had brought the news, Where are you from? And he replied, I am a foreigner, an Amalekite who lives in your land. Why were you not afraid to kill the Lord's anointed one? David asked. Then David said to one of his men, Kill him! So the man thrust his sword into the Amalekite and killed him. You have condemned yourself, David said, for you yourself confessed that you killed the Lord's anointed one. David's Song for Saul and Jonathan Then David composed a funeral song for Saul and Jonathan, and he commanded that it be taught to the people of Judah. It is known as the Song of the Bow, and it is recorded in the book of Jasher. Your pride and joy, O Israel, lies dead on the hills. Oh, how the mighty heroes have fallen. Don't announce the news in Gath. Don't proclaim it in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice and the pagans will laugh in triumph. O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor fruitful fields producing offerings of grain. For there the shield of the mighty heroes was defiled. The shield of Saul will no longer be anointed with oil. The bow of Jonathan was powerful, and the sword of Saul did its mighty work. They shed the blood of their enemies and pierced the bodies of mighty heroes. How beloved and gracious were Saul and Jonathan. They were together in life and in death. They were swifter than eagles, stronger than lions. O women of Israel, weep for Saul, for he dressed you in luxurious scarlet clothing, in garments decorated with gold. Oh, how the mighty heroes have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies dead on the hills. How I weep for you, my brother Jonathan. Oh, how much I loved you, and your love for me was deep, deeper than the love of women. Oh, how the mighty heroes have fallen. Stripped of their weapons, they lie dead.